In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to the flexible budget and standard costs, going through the questions and then practicing test taking skills with them. First question. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle. Always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six-pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Difference between the actual cost and the standard cost is either A, controllable variance, B, price variance, C, expense variance, D, cost variance, or E, volume variance let's go through this again using the process of elimination difference between the actual cost and the standard cost is either a controllable variance so the actual cost and the standard maybe we might say that sounds kind of reasonable b says the price variance now we're talking about the cost so uh, you could you know we might think that's another word for the cost i'll keep that for now the expense variance so expense variance and again we're talking about the cost possibly D says the cost variance, and that sounds almost too good to be true, uh, almost too correct, normal. And then E says the volume variance. And so I don't think it's going to be the, the volume variance. I'm going to cross out the volume just so we can cross one out here. So let's go through this again. Difference between the actual cost and the standard cost is the controllable variance. It, it, that sounds a little abstract. I'm going to say no. The price variance, expense variance, or cost variance. Now, between those three, the expense and cost sound kind of similar. Price is kind of the outside term. So maybe if we thought that price was the cost, but price uh, sounds a little bit different than the cost or the expense. So I'm going to say not B. And then between C and D, it's it, it's almost saying that D almost sounds too good to be right or too, too right on to be the correct answer because it's the cost. Uh, and the standard, but D is the correct answer. So D is the one. So we're going to say the difference between the actual cost and the standard cost is D, the cost variance. Next question. Which is not part of the variance analysis process? Either A, preparing a standard cost performance report. B, identifying questions based on analysis and seeking explanations. C, Correcting problems and taking a strategic actions, taking strategic actions. D, uh, computing variances. And E, seeing that all variances are favorable. Let's go through this again using the process of elimination. Which is not part of the variance analysis process? A, preparing a standard cost performance report. That sounds like it would be part of the process. We need a cost performance report. B says identifying questions based on analysis and seeking explanations. Now, if we're, if we're talking about this whole process of a, of a variance analysis, you would think part of that process would be some kind of analysis and seeking explanation, right? The whole system, the whole process. So I'm going to say that sounds like it's got to be part of the process. C says correcting problems and taking strategic action. It has two ands here, which it shouldn't, but uh, correcting problems and taking strategic actions. Again, that seems like part of the process. We're going to do analysis, and then we're going to basically correct the, the problem. So I would think that that would be part of it. And then D says computing variances, and that's going to be the differences. So that would seem reasonable. 
And then E says, seeing that all variances are favorable. So that would be something like we're trying to control all variances possibly to be favorable or something like that. So of those two, if we read through this again, which is not part of the variance analysis process? I don't think E is not what we're trying to do to see that all variances are going to be favorable. So we're going to have favorable and unfavorable differences. And then we go into them. We probably do more analysis on the unfavorable differences so that we can then improve in the future. And we're more concerned with the unfavorable differences, possibly. Although, if the favorable differences are substantial too, we want to, we want to look into why that would be as well. So E is, looks like the uh, most correct answer, final answer, which is not part of the variance analysis process. E, seeing that all variances are favorable.